Welcome back, tiny predators. Today, we're diving into the microscopic world of one of the most notorious parasites known to humankind, Entamoeba histolytica. This tiny organism is responsible for the disease amoebiasis, affecting millions of people globally, especially in tropical and subtropical regions. So, let's explore what makes this amoeba a real threat. What is Entamoeba histolytica? Entamoeba histolytica is a protozoan parasite, which means it's a single-celled organism. Despite its small size, it has a massive impact on human health. It's one of the few amoebas that can invade the human body and cause disease, primarily by infecting the intestines. Geographical distribution of Entamoeba histolytica Entamoeba histolytica is primarily found in tropical and subtropical regions, where conditions like poor sanitation and limited access to clean water facilitate its spread. High prevalence areas include parts of Central and South America, Africa, South Asia, and Southeast Asia. However, due to global travel and migration, cases can also occur in more developed countries, particularly among travelers returning from endemic regions. What is Habitat of Entamoeba histolytica? Entamoeba histolytica primarily inhabits the human gastrointestinal tract, particularly the large intestine. In its cyst form, it can survive outside the human body in soil, water, or on contaminated food, allowing it to spread to new hosts. Inside the body, the parasite exists as trophozoites, where it can either live harmlessly or invade the intestinal lining, causing disease. Morphology of Entamoeba histolytica Entamoeba histolytica has two primary morphological forms, the cyst and the trophozoite. Cyst. Cysts are round, non-modal, and typically measure 10-15 micrometers in diameter. They have a thick, protective wall and contain 1-4 to four nuclei, which help them survive harsh environmental conditions outside the host. 2. Trophozoites. Trophozoites are the active, modal form, measuring 15-20 micrometers. They have a single nucleus with a centrally located karyosome and a clear, granular cytoplasm. Trophozoites are responsible for tissue invasion and disease symptoms when they infect the human intestine. Explain the life cycle of Entamoeba histolytica. 1. Ingestion of cysts. The cycle begins when a person ingests Entamoeba histolytica cysts through contaminated food or water. These cysts are the infectious form of the parasite and are resistant to environmental conditions, allowing them to survive outside the host for extended periods. 2. Existation. Once inside the host's small intestine, the cysts undergo exestation, a process where the cysts transform into trophozoites. During exestation, each cyst releases multiple trophozoites. 3. Trophozoite stage. The trophozoites are the active, modal form of the parasite. They move to the large intestine, where they can have two potential outcomes. 3a. Non-invasive. Trophozoites may remain in the intestinal lumen, feeding on bacteria and debris without causing harm. These trophozoites can insist again and be excreted in the feces, continuing the cycle. 3b. Invasive. In some cases, the trophozoites invade the intestinal lining, causing tissue damage and forming ulcers. This invasion can lead to symptoms like diarrhea and dysentery. In severe cases, the trophozoites can enter the bloodstream and spread to other organs, such as the liver, causing extraintestinal complications like liver abscesses. 4. NC station. As trophozoites move through the large intestine, they may undergo NC station, reverting back to the cyst form. This process usually occurs when the parasites reach the lower part of the intestine, where conditions are less favorable for their survival. The newly formed cysts are then excreted in the feces, ready to infect another host. 5. Excretion and transmission. The cysts are passed out of the body through feces, often contaminating soil, water, or food in areas with poor sanitation. These cysts can survive in the environment for weeks or even months, remaining infectious and ready to begin the cycle again when ingested by a new host. How Entamoeba histolytica causes disease, pathogenicity in human being and what are the symptoms? 1. Invasion of the intestinal lining. After exestation in the small intestine, the trophozoites migrate to the large intestine, where they adhere to the epithelial cells of the intestinal lining. The trophozoites produce enzymes, such as proteases, that break down the protective mucus and the epithelial cells themselves, allowing them to penetrate the intestinal wall. 2. Formation of ulcers. As the trophozoites invade deeper into the intestinal tissue, they cause cell destruction and inflammation, leading to the formation of ulcers, also known as flask-shaped ulcers, due to their characteristic shape. This damage results in the clinical symptoms of amoebiasis, such as abdominal pain, diarrhea, and dysentery, bloody stools. 
3. Disruption of the intestinal barrier. The destruction of the intestinal lining disrupts the barrier that normally prevents harmful substances and microorganisms from entering the bloodstream. This can lead to further complications, including secondary bacterial infections and an increased risk of perforation of the intestine, which can be life-threatening. 4. Spread to other organs. In some cases, the trophozoites can enter the bloodstream and spread to other organs, most commonly the liver. Once in the liver, the trophozoites can cause the formation of abscesses, which are collections of pus resulting from the body's immune response to the infection. Liver abscesses can cause severe pain, fever, and other systemic symptoms. In rare cases, the parasite can also spread to the lungs, brain, or other organs, leading to additional complications. 5. Immune Response and Inflammation The presence of the trophozoites and the tissue damage they cause triggers a strong immune response, leading to inflammation. This inflammation contributes to the symptoms of the disease, including fever and increased pain. Overall, the disease caused by Entamoeba histolytica, known as amoebiasis, ranges from mild, non-symptomatic cases to severe, invasive forms that can be fatal if left untreated. The severity of the disease depends on factors such as the virulence of the parasite strain, the immune status of the host, and the presence of co-infections. What is laboratory diagnosis for Entamoeba histolytica infection? 1. Microscopic examination. Stool samples are examined under a microscope to identify cysts or trophozoites. However, this method can be challenging because E. histolytica is morphologically similar to non-pathogenic species like Entamoeba disper. 2. Antigen detection. Stool or serum tests can detect specific E. histolytica antigens, offering more accuracy than microscopy. 3. Molecular techniques. PCR, polymerase chain reaction, Tests are used to detect E. histolytica DNA in stool or tissue samples, providing a definitive diagnosis and distinguishing it from other non-pathogenic amoebas. 4. Serology. Blood tests can detect antibodies against E. histolytica, especially useful in diagnosing extraintestinal amoebiasis, such as liver abscesses. 5. Imaging. Ultrasound, CT, or MRI scans can identify liver abscesses and other complications in cases of invasive disease. What is the treatment for Entamoeba histolytica infection? Treatment of Entamoeba histolytica infection typically involves the use of antiparasitic medications. 1. Metronidazole or Tinidazole. These drugs are commonly used to treat the invasive form of the infection, targeting the trophozoites in the tissues and reducing symptoms. 2. Luminal agents. To eliminate cysts in the intestine and prevent recurrence, a luminal agent like paramomycin, iodoquinol, or diloxinide ferroate is administered after initial treatment with metronidazole or tinidazole. 3. Surgical intervention. In rare cases where complications like liver abscesses do not respond to medication, surgical drainage may be necessary. How to prevent Entamoeba histolytica infection? 1. Improve sanitation. Ensure access to clean and safe sanitation facilities to prevent contamination of food and water with fecal matter. 2. Drink safe water. Use filtered, boiled, or bottled water to avoid ingesting cysts. Be cautious with ice and unboiled beverages in areas with poor sanitation. 3. Practice good hygiene. Wash hands thoroughly with soap and water, especially before eating or preparing food and after using the toilet. 4. Cook food thoroughly. Avoid eating raw or undercooked food, especially in areas where the parasite is prevalent. Cook meat and other foods thoroughly to kill any potential parasites. 5. Avoid contaminated food. Be cautious with street food and raw produce. Wash fruits and vegetables thoroughly with clean water or peel them before eating. 6. Educate and promote hygiene. Public health initiatives and education can help raise awareness about preventive practices and improve community hygiene. Conclusion. Entamoeba histolytica may be small, but its impact is enormous. By understanding how it spreads and how to protect yourself, you can help reduce the risk of amoebiasis. So, stay informed, stay healthy, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into the world of pathogens.